Hi everyone, this is Eric from Dumb Game Dev, and today we're going to be looking at a custom action here called uh, Speech Bubble, or sorry, Bubble Canvas is the name of this action. So this is a new action that I've come up with, and it does sort of what it says. It makes a speech bubble uh, in a canvas appear above an NPC's head and it fades in and fades out. You can set a certain amount of time using the action, as well as it can optionally rotate for it to face the camera or the player. So this is a world space camera. So this is great for VR or other types of games. You don't have to use a bubble, but I'm going to use a bubble. You could use other types of uh, backgrounds. So let's take a look at how it's set up and we'll get into the details. Now, I do have a scene already set up here, and it doesn't include too much. Just look at the scene view here. We have, this is my NPC, or my third person controller here that I'm going to walk around. Um, it includes a camera that's attached to it, as well as we have a single directional light, a floor here for people to walk on. This white cylinder over here is my... Um, I guess white sphere is my NPC. We have the Playmaker GUI, which is added automatically if we use anything Playmaker related. And then here we have the Speech Bubble Canvas. Now I'm going to upload a prefab of this to my GitHub account so you can just grab my prefab and throw it into your scene. Once you've done that, make sure that you break the prefab instance by going break prefab instance. If you don't do that, sometimes you'll have trouble with Playmaker. I'm not quite sure why, and I'm not going to worry about it for now. Now I'm going to show you how my canvas is set up to just give you an idea of how that works in case you want to set up your own. Basically the top level is just a normal canvas. And then something below that we've got a, um, this is a UI panel. So there's just a panel within this called bubble holder which holds everything. And the reason we have this is because we're going to have the action, the Playmaker action on Speech Bubble Canvas on the very, very top level. So we need a child to turn off and on as we want to turn our Speech Bubble off and on. So we can't turn the root off and on, otherwise the uh, FSM will stop working. So we've got a child. Then within the child it holds, um, let's just make sure it's on and take a look at it here. It's just over here. This is what it looks like. So you can see if we turn off the the panel, it turns off everything. Then I've got these little bubbles down the corner. So again, this is just another panel. And in the panel on the image, I've added an image and just dragged it down to the corner. So you just want them all the way down to the bottom right hand corner because this is where it's going to anchor above the head. So you could use any kind of bubbles or line that you want. Then in the main area here you can see this is just my background area. So again it's another panel and in this panel I've just added a speech bubble image and again this will come in the prefab. Then within that I've just added some text. So you could add any kind of text you want. I just use the regular um, text from Unity. You could use a the uh, text mesh pro text or you could even add an image or whatever else so you're probably already familiar with how to change the text using um, playmaker so I'm not going to go over that part of things but you can use a text mesh pro actions that I came up with to change the text or just use a regular playmaker actions to change the text so for today for now we're not going to worry about changing the text okay, so that's how this is all set up so Going to the speech bubble canvas, the actual root here, we're going to add an action to this. So we're going to go Playmaker and create a new FSM. And then I'm just going to call this Begin. And on this date, I'm going to add this bubble canvas. You can search it. I think it's probably be under your custom. So uh, you can get this from my GitHub account. I will put a link in this YouTube video where to find this action. And you're just going to toss it into your project wherever. It'll take a you know, a few seconds to compile for Unity, and then you'll have this bubble action in your action browser for Playmaker. Okay, so let's look at some of the options of this and how to set it up, because there are a, a bunch of different options you need to set up. And so the canvas in this case is the owner, so we're just using this speech bubble canvas as the owner here. The next thing you want to do is set up the child, the canvas child game object, and so we're using this as our bubble holder. 
because we're going to turn this off and on, right? Now, there's another um, one here that might not make a lot of sense. It's called Canvas Group Object. So for my Canvas Group Object, I am going to use the Speech Bubble Canvas and just put it right here. Now, if you were to use a different area, it's going to tell you that you need to add a component called Canvas Group, okay? So my prefab already has Canvas Group on it, and so let's just look what that is. So if we go to the inspector, and when you make a canvas, this won't be on it automatically, but you can add a component just by going Canvas Group, and like that and just leave it as default. And what the canvas group does is it allows everything under it to be able to fade in and out. So we can fade everything in and out no matter how many things there are on the canvas. So you can see the alpha is set to one by default here. And if we um, drag it, you can see we can fade everything in and out. So this action needs to know where the canvas group object is. Uh, or the game object with the canvas group on it, so I'm just going to put it right on the root, okay? So the next thing you need is the target. So the target in this case is our NPC. That's where we want the speech bubble to appear over the NPC's head. And so I'm going to grab this NPC and throw it in. I'm going to try and grab this NPC, okay. Let's just search the scene then, since that's not working. NPC. Okay, so for the NPC, it does need to have some kind of a collider. So mine has a sphere collider. It can be any kind of collider, but it's going to use the collider to determine the height to place the bubble. So if your collider is uh, very small, you're going to have to probably set some kind of an offset on the Y offset to make it higher, like add an extra one on the Y axis. Okay, if your collider is like huge, much bigger than your object, it might appear way out the top of your collider, so you might have to add a negative. A negative. So I'm just going to say add 0.5 as an offset. So the next options here are actually about the bubble itself. So the uh, bubble display delay is how long does it take before this bubble starts showing itself. So maybe I don't want it to show right away. I could say wait three seconds before it shows, or I could say zero to start right away. And I'm going to say wait three seconds. Then I want the speech bubble to appear for 10 seconds. You could set this to any amount of time, or if you set never end, it's going to ignore the display time and then the speech bubble will just stay up forever, okay? You can have it fade in or fade out. The fade in or out uh, just has a smooth fade and you can set the fade speed in or out. So this is one second, which is, is nice. If you disable these, then it just pops in and out, just appears and disappears. So it's a little bit nicer if it fades. Now, you do need to set finish event. If you don't set a finish event, this um, action won't finish. It won't go to the next um, state. So for example, if we had another state over here, um, when this action finished, it wouldn't go. And this is by design, but so for example, if we have a fade out, we're using the fade in, the fade out, then we just set the fade out finished event to finished, and when it's done fading in and out, it will go to the next state. Or if we're using a never end event, we can also have this bubble never end event set to finished, and what will happen is that as soon as this is done once, it will go to the next state right away. So I'll give you an example how that works. So let's just, um, remove these so you can see. So it needs an event, it says here. So a new event, let's just call this one fade out and add that to our state. And then we'll call this one no end. So you'll see when they fire off. So if it fades out, it'll go here. If it's never ending, it will go here. Faded, never end, okay. Now we want it to end, so I'm gonna uncheck that. Now the last major option here is a canvas rotation. And what this is gonna do is rotate the 
speech bubble towards whatever you want it to rotate towards. So usually this is going to be your camera. So I'm going to open up my third person controller, choose main camera, and drag it down to rotate towards the main camera. Otherwise, if you don't have this, it's, it is a flat canvas. So if you walk behind it or beside it, it will disappear, which could be, you know, not great if you're for immersion in the actual game itself, especially for VR or stuff like this. We can set the rotation speed about how fast this canvas is going to rotate. I'm just going to set it to one. We can reverse direction. Sometimes our canvas is reversed. And so we're looking at the back of the canvas, which can be really annoying. So you can just click this check mark. And so we can see one or the other side of the canvas. Now, if we are going to use this canvas rotation, we do need to set every frame. It says here required every frame. If you're not using the rotation, you don't need to use the every frame event. Um, but if you don't use the every frame event, this canvas won't follow the player. So normally this canvas will follow the NPC around, but it needs to be turned on to every frame to make that happen. So we're going to turn it on. So it looks like everything's set up here. I'm just going to add like three or four seconds here just so we can see it up here. And um, let's hit play and see what happens. Okay, so one thing I noticed right off the bat here is we do need to disable this so that it's hidden. And then, okay, everything looks okay. Let's try again. Okay, so as you can see, it fades in. And now it's going to take about 10 seconds to fade out. and then it's faded out. So as you can see, once it's faded out, it's triggered this faded event. It goes fade out to faded. So that way, once it's done, you can move on to the next event. Now let's just speed this up a little bit here. And um, let's give us all seven seconds. Okay, so So as you can see, it fades in. And now as we walk around, you can see that it rotates to face towards our camera so that we can always see it. We could make this faster so that there's not so much of a delay. So let's say we put 10. So it fades in. So this way, it's pretty much always facing us no matter where we go. And as we see, it's quite high above, so I'm going to have no offset here. Awesome. So let's see here. And as you can see, let's turn this off. If we move our NPC in the scene, I don't have it animated, so you won't be able to see it so easily. But let's just set this to uh, 15. All right, so I don't I don't have my scene animated, but if you do grab just the NPC here, you can see that it will move with the NPC and match. But you need to make sure you have the every frame event on to make this happen. Okay, so the other thing is we can turn off this every frame and not have it rotate, and it will just um, face the canvas direction that we set up. And maybe we want it to never end, so it won't end after 15 seconds. So let's just push play. and it opens up and you can see right away it triggers this never ends event and so because it's never going to end we we want it to get out of this state otherwise we'll be stuck here forever and we won't be able to do something else now if we did want to get rid of this later we could just use the the action again in another state and just uh, you know have no delay and set the end time right away and it would also close down that uh, speech bubble so this is basically how you use the bubble canvas. I think I covered pretty much everything you need to know. If you don't set any end events here, um, but you have it set to never end, it, it, like I said, it's going to get stuck in the state. So be careful with that. It'll just stay here forever.
And as you can see, it's no longer following us along because we, we don't have the every frame set or the enable rotation. So there you go. Hopefully you like this action. Uh, feel free to send me some feedback on it and um, maybe I'll have a second version. We'll update a little bit more. Uh, one question that I probably know will come up, which I didn't make part of the action, but you can still set it up depending on how good your skills are with the uh, canvases, is that how to make this canvas change with the size of your text, which is completely possible but sort of out the scope of this action, but I will just mention it anyways, is you do need to set up this um, main areas image and it probably wouldn't work very well with this one but if you had sort of a more square bubble image um, you can use the sliced version you'd have to slice it up so that the corners can stretch out and there are some methods using um, unity to do that that doesn't have anything to do with coding or whatever else it just depends on how you set up the canvas so just to let you know that is possible but that's not necessarily something that i'm going to do with this action okay don't forget to um, join us on our Playmaker Slack channel, which you can find down below. So we just chat about Playmaker. If you want to see more actions like this, hit up my Patreon account, um, you know, pledge a few dollars and help keep the action.